Good afternoon, everyone. Troubling gas discovery. Scientists have now discovered five new greenhouse gases that break down very slowly in nature, more potent, thousands of times more potent than CO2, previously not been detected in the environment. Oh, strange. We should be talking about the Grand Solar Minimum intensifying, hail damage in Saskatchewan doubling from last year, insurance payouts, insurance just around Manitoba and Canada barely able to keep up with the claims, 25 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than normal temperatures in the U.S. and Canada, heavy snows across Michigan, heavy snows in the warmest year ever in late spring in Australia in several locations, in Tasmania, heavy snow. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. And you can find the links for My Patriot Supply Adapt 2030 in the description box below, as well as links to Mini Ice Age Conversations Tri Weekly Podcast and the links and stories for tonight's video. I'm going to start you up here in Svalbard. You know this from the Seed Bank location. Troubling gas discovery, potentially 1,000 times higher power than CO2, extremely high. Greenhouse gases, five of them no less, have been detected. Now the article goes on and it talks about these gases are super troubling because they break down very slowly in nature. They're just going to heat our planet incredibly. Yet a few more paragraphs down, they say it's a rare find. We did not expect to find these gases. These have not previously been detected in the environment. So wait a second. They break down slowly, so they should be here for a very long time. They should have been detected long, long, long ago when all this atmospheric science started, yet they're just now finding them. That is very interesting. And the article continues, five new gases in the air samples connected with the Environmental Directorate's screening program for new environmental pollutants. Now, still with the continuation of this planet is going to continue to warm into infinity. They continue to dismiss, and I'm going to say the IPCC does not take into consideration solar variability in the way that our planet's climate moves. You know, the sun dictates a lot of what happens on the Earth climate-wise, yet those are not in the models. We should be talking about the grand solar minimum intensifying. As these magnetic waves on the sun start to cancel each other out, we're looking for some huge changes on our planet, food production-wise, as well as climate and weather-wise. Insurers, at some point, are going to stop paying to insure for crops because there'll be so much damage. And then at what point can the farmers even get loans to be able to get equipment, seeds, and what they need to put in the fields? Case in point, Canada, hail damage, claims for Saskatchewan, almost $100 million, but you have to realize that's more than double from last year. So what if it doubles again next year and the year after, which is forecast for the grand solar minimum? The weather's going to completely fall apart through 2030. And then over in Manitoba, crop hail payments also increasing. The claims that they paid out were $161 million up from last year as well, but they only brought in on premiums $264 million. So it just takes a little simple math to try to figure out when they're not going to insure crops anymore. And that would be probably about four years from now. Also taking a look into the cold blast and possible accumulating snow for, well, far more than just the plains in the Midwest late this week. Late this week is now through the weekend, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, below normal temperatures. And I thought, really, that's unusual to have this much coverage of the U.S. Look at the temperatures below freezing. That dark blue is full freeze. Anywhere in the periphery in the teal, frost. Temperature departure from normal. Again, we get that really dark blue 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Right down through the grain harvesting areas at the moment, more snows. So we just have to wonder anything that's being planted for the winter and also what's being harvested. 
Now taking a look, if you're up in Michigan, this is about how much snow is expected. 10 to 12 inches, a full foot. You know it's going to be a long snowy winter when you're getting these types of snows this early in the season. So predicted was something like 1977, 1978, repeat in the amount of snow. You know, we're talking snow belt, Great Lakes areas. And also continue on, let's flip to the southern hemisphere. The media in Australia keeps touting how warm it is, how hot it is. New Zealand as well, they were just smashed with frost last week. Late spring, yet Tasmania. This is still over the last few days. Heavy snow is still forecast. Snow in late spring in the hottest year ever, in the warmest year ever, according to the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. Yet the snow just keeps on coming. Tassie, winter dream, late spring. Center of the island there, heavy snows. Bring you up here, Victoria. More snows. I know there's the ski resort areas. It's going to allow them to stay open even later than predicted. But this is about how much snow is falling across the range there. I, for one, am going to say that these temperatures and snowfalls that we're seeing currently were not predicted in the models that were coming out of the IPCC. This is completely a different data set, a different range of variables that are happening. We should start looking at the reasons why. The forecast for astrophysicists across the planet is a grand solar minimum intensifying into 2030 and beyond. Maybe this is the causation. Maybe we really need to talk about shifting our food growing areas on the planet so we all can continue to eat.